Hi everyone, I'm Eric Hicks. I'm in Toronto, Ontario. I'm 33 years old and I make a living as an actor. Um, I just wanted to give you guys any insights. If you're thinking about entering the acting industry, what it takes to actually make a career in it. And it's definitely not what you think. Here it is. When I was growing up, I grew up in a small town in Saskatchewan, uh, a province in Canada that's all farming. So I came from a farming background on my mom's side and my dad's side is all a small town where I spent most of my time growing up. Now theater, this kind of stuff, it wasn't a big thing there. We had one little movie store in town and I was obsessed with renting movies. I would actually, they had a gumball machine there. And for a quarter, if you got a black gumball, you could get a free movie. And I had this like way, it was Haggerty's, and I would always manipulate this gumball machine around so I'd always get the black balls. And <laughs> he'd always yell at me, he's like, hey, st like, stop shaking the machine. And so I, that's how I got my fix of watching movies growing up. And they'd actually, in this town, a really beautiful small town I grew up in, Lums in Saskatchewan, if you want to look it up, they would make one or two movies there every single year. And they would bring these huge lights and light up our main street. And the one year they'd actually made a movie in our house and taken it over for a month. And I was just completely enveloped in the process. I was so curious and I wanted to do it. And so my mom got my brother and I as featured background on Jamie Foxx's movie Held Up. And I remember watching Jamie Foxx and there was this one scene where there's a car just like ripping out on a dirt road just, and Jamie's like running after it jumping into the window of the car and I was like oh my god he's doing his own stunts I was like I want to do like I, I want to do that I'm like what is this and my mom took my brother and I to an audition our first audition and my brother went in first and he came out traumatized and I refused to go in the room I was so insecure and I was like you know what nope not for me and that was it that was the end of it and I remember we had like school talent shows and in grade seven, me and a bunch of friends, we put together this ridiculous routine of us just jumping around being idiots and we we're gonna perform in front of the whole school. And the day before I backed out because I was afraid of what other people were gonna think about me. Now, that show went on and everyone laughed their asses off. It was freaking hilarious. And I was like beating myself, I was like, why did I let fear get over me? I should have just gone through with it, got on stage and gotten over myself. And so anyways, that was a big lesson for me. So going forward into high school, there was a theater club, but the not so cool kids did theater. And so I didn't want to be associated with that. So I was like, I was a short skinny kid. I needed all the cool factor I could get. So I did sports and I just like hustled my ass off. And that was great. When I graduated high school, I went out to BC and British Columbia, another province in Canada, and I studied prosthetics and orthotics, and I was really, really good at it. I became the youngest certified prosthetist in Canadian history, but the whole time I'm going doing this, I'm just itching to be in the arts. And one of the guys who was in my class, his brother came to visit during Christmas time, and he was in Stratford, which is the Shakespearean um, festival all year round, in Ontario, Canada. And he was so dynamic and alive and telling these beautiful stories and just like, he stole the show of the night and I was like, that guy is so cool. I'm like, an artist, a true artist, a storyteller and it was so engaging. And it really shaped, you know, what I wanted to do. So when I moved back to Saskatchewan to do my internship in prosthetics, I was just looking for any doors to open. And when you're looking for opportunity, you will find it. That is a big lesson in life. You look for opportunity, it will present itself to you. And one thing you need to know in life is opportunity is everywhere. It presents itself quite equally to everyone. It's just whether or not you're looking for it or not. So opportunity can present itself to you. And if your head's down and you're not looking for it, bam, walks right by you. So you always gotta be looking for opportunity. Whatever you set your mind on is what you're gonna attract into your life. This is a principle that has been tried, tested, and true in my whole life. It's proven itself again and again and again. Now I've attracted things I don't want, 
because that's where my mind was and I got it. And it, it's not what I, I, I got exactly what I asked for, but so you gotta be careful what you ask for. So anyways, I went, I was walking through a mall in Regina, Saskatchewan and there was two ladies and they were doing a runway show and I was like, they were begging me to join and I was like, you know what? Let's do it. I'm not letting that high school grade seven fear thing take over again. So I show up at this runway thing and I just don't care. I'm walking down the runway, I take off my shirt, I'm ripping it around, throw it in the crowd, having a great time, just getting everybody jumped up. So of course I won that and they took me to the Canadian Model and Talent Convention in Mississauga in Ontario. And I was only supposed to be go for modeling stuff. But realistically I knew I was, I'm shorter, so I knew uh, career modeling wasn't going to be worth anything. So I was like, acting, this is my chance. They had an acting component where all different agencies from around the world came and they're scouting talent. So what I did is I bought the book Acting for Dummies, read it, just got a good sense of like what the industry is, and I prepared a monologue, I prepared a scene, um, you do a cold read scene there, and a TV commercial I prepared. And I just worked the crap out of it. I had no idea really what I was doing, but I just put my heart and soul into that thing. And I showed up at that convention and I won best TV commercial. And I won uh, overall best talent for the whole convention, over 200 actors. And all these agencies were like, move to this city and we'll sign you, we'd love to have you. And I was like, well, there's no better sign than that. And so what I did is I gave my one month notice at my prosthetics and I just quit my career hard, cold, cut it, and I was like, if I'm gonna do acting, I'm gonna treat it like a career, and I'm gonna set my past behind me, that's done with, and I'm gonna do whatever it takes to make that career happen. Now, what I've learned along the way is it takes a lot of sacrifice to make an acting career happen. I moved, so what I did, after I gave my one month, I packed up all my stuff, I rented a U-Haul, and I chose an agency in Toronto, Ontario. Toronto was the acting hub of Canada, essentially. There's Vancouver and Toronto, but Toronto's more busy than Vancouver, and I'd already lived in Vancouver, so I wanted to try a new city. Didn't know anybody there. Packed up, moved out to Toronto, and when I got out here, I was lost. I had no idea what to do, so I was asking all these people, I'm like, should I take classes? Should I go to theater school? You know, what should I do? And a lot of people are like, if you want to do theater, go to theater school. You want to do film and television, study in private studios, make your own pathway. And I was like, you know what? I want to do film and television. I also love theater, but I'll do that on the side of my own. And so what I did, I thought I was going to take over the industry. I was so convinced. I was this hot little shit coming in. I was like, oh yeah, it's like, I'm going to just take it over. And I came in with this awesome energy and everybody welcomed me with big open arms like, oh, this lovely high energy kid coming into the city. I would have been 22 at that time. And I got close on some stuff, but the thing is, is I didn't know how to act. I didn't have any training. I didn't have any skills at storytelling and I didn't know how to do it yet. And so a lot of people just kind of shut their doors to me. The first agency I signed with, Stylus Canada. It was a scam agency. Be aware of this. Show up, they charged I think $500 or $600 way back then. Just to take, they took a camera like I'm filming this on and they just took some photos against the wall out back, took some photos, took some photos on their little balcony thing and charged me like professional, if not more expensive than the highest professional headshot photographers in the city. And then what they did is they ended up getting commission from any work you made and then they didn't pay anybody and they claimed bankruptcy and then just like took everyone's money. So be careful about scam agencies. They are everywhere and they're usually lower end agencies. So if you talk to someone from the industry, they'll give you a list of reputable acting agencies and modeling agencies if you want, but be careful of all these underdogs coming in. They're just looking to make money as easy as they can. They can get you some auditions and so it looks promising to get you some jobs, but they're gonna go out of business right away. And so you really wanna try to be with as reputable of an agency as you possibly can right out of the gate. And then try to match your talent to that agency. And then just keep like stepping up. There's a top tier of agencies in the city that have all the relationships. So you wanna essentially be aligned with one of those. But it might take you a long time, like it took me to get there. 
I had my eyes on another agency, uh, Colin McMurray, and he was at the convention also scouting, but he said, give it a few years of training before I hook up with him. So that's what I did. I started improv, uh, Second City. I started on-camera acting classes, two-camera scene study at Pro Actors Lab. Um, I started doing community theater. I was doing choir. I was doing private singing lessons. I was doing Latin ballroom dancing, a little jazz, a little hip hop, a little contemporary. Um, I was doing Toastmasters, uh, audition classes at Armstrong Studios, um, and then just other private little classes, little things I want to learn here and there. My days were just booked out, top to bottom, and then I, had a, I got a serving job in the city. But before I moved to Toronto, I made sure I got a serving job in Regina so I could transfer over and make it easier to get a job out here. But the whole goal was to work as little as I possibly had to, to pay my bills, and to get by just even. So it wasn't about making money and saving up. It wasn't about going on vacations. It was about investing in my future, investing in myself and my craft. And it's paid off very well. That's the way I still do it to this day. Um, so that wasn't a very, it was a, an extremely effective strategy, but the thing is, is it just takes time. It takes so much failure to learn. So I went to, you know, commercial audition after commercial audition after commercial audition, and I was just so nervous and so needy, and I wanted it so bad, and the industry can pick up on that. They really feel that energy and that desperation. It becomes about you. And it becomes about booking the job, which isn't what it's about. It's about the art form. When you're talking commercials, it's about selling their product. So you got to know how to place yourself to sell someone else's product. And it can't be about you at all. And when you figure that out, that it's about the work, that's when you start booking. Now, it took me seven years of constant, non-stop training, failing, auditioning to book my first ever union acting gig. Seven years of no's for that one yes. Now, I'll get to that in a minute, but what I want you to understand is that this is an evolution. The way I see it is it's like a ladder. And every time you're doing these training and failing, 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 you might get a non-union in the non-union world. You book a job, you book a short film, awesome. A web series, awesome. You book a non-union feature, awesome. Maybe smaller roles at first. You're at the bottom of the rung. And all of a sudden, you prove yourself. You do something good. Someone's like, hey, that's great. You audition for a bit bigger role. Bam, you jump up a rung. But guess what? When you jump up a rung, you're getting a bit bigger roles. Now you're at the bottom of that whole group of actors and you got to work your way to the top of that group and before you get a bigger role in that world. And then once you get to that bigger role, you gotta keep working and working, training, getting better, failing, 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 bam, you get a yes. You're at the next level, a little bit bigger role in the non-union world. And eventually what happened to me over that seven years is I got to the top of the non-union world. So I could literally book whatever non-union job I went out for and I got to the point where I would just ask for the script ahead of time, read it, and I'd be like, is there a 30 second chunk in this script that I can use for a demo reel. A lot of it's gonna be bad writing, but I'm always looking for that 30 second demo reel chunk so I can cut myself a good demo reel. And that's what I always looked for and it worked really well. So I was cutting new demo reels all the time because I was doing all these non-union shorts films. And it was cool, it was great, a great way to network. And you can send that out to agents, you can send that out to casting directors. Hey, this is what I'm up to, blah, blah, blah. You know, cutting a new demo reel every year. And then you're always learning and failing. And you can take a lot of risks in the non-union world. So you almost don't even want to rush that non-union world. That's your area to explore and play. That's almost like your theater school for film and television actors. And so I remember it was probably five years in, I had a guy who had been in the industry for a while and he gave me some advice. He was looking at me, he's like, Eric, he's like, you're really scattered. He's like, all your attention is spread out so thin in a hundred different things you're doing. He's like, you need to hyper focus in on one area and one area only. Figure out what you want and go get it. And I was like, you know what? He's right. And after reflecting on that, I cut out these singing lessons and dancing classes and 
you know, community theater and this and that. And I just started focusing on acting classes to really just, bam, get really good at acting. And it helped. Noticeably, you know, month after month after month, just small micro increments of change. And then year by year, you kind of look and you're like, oh, just a little bit better every year, just a little bit. It's so hard to see, but you gotta trust the process that the more you do it, the more you fail, the better you're gonna get at it. But it's, it's sometimes it's disheartening because you feel like you're going backwards. You feel like you're not learning anything anymore. And so uh, sometimes you just wanna quit, you wanna give up. You're like, why am I doing this? This is so stupid, I'm playing pretend for a living. And you gotta get beyond that and you gotta be like, nope, head down, do the work, get focused, show up, keep failing, keep learning. You're gonna get little successes. And what you're gonna find is you're gonna have these great performances and it's gonna be like, ah! Oh! You're like, it's doable. I can do it. And you gotta remember those. You can't forget those moments when you really had something special. And then just keep pushing. Don't stop pushing, don't stop training. What a lot of people do is when they start getting success, one of two things. They can get afraid of success and then they almost sabotage themselves to stay in this comfortable zone where they're not in the public eye, where they're not failing and they're you know, not taking risks. That doesn't work. That's a backwards momentum. And then number two, I forget what the heck I was even saying. Um, oh, I forget what I was saying. The risks. What was I saying? Oh, anyways, we'll just skip that. If it comes to me, it comes to me. Um, yeah, you can't stop training. You can't stop failing. And oh yeah, the other part is when you start hitting success, you start getting bang, 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 bang. A lot of people are like, they take it easy. They lay back and they're like, I'm gonna go on a vacation. You know, I'm gonna go take a month off and do this or two months off and do that. And I'm gonna stop taking acting classes for a while. I need a break. I'm tired and exhausted and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, just be careful, you can do that, but be careful when you do that, that you don't lose all that momentum that you've been building. You really want to ride that momentum. And so what this industry ends up doing is it ends up sucking you in and like taking over your whole life and it becomes your life. Like every single day, that's all you do is acting, 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 acting. And that's almost the level of obsession you need. If you wanna have a successful career in this industry, you gotta get obsessed with it every day. That's gotta be your world. This is your career. And so if you don't have that love and passion in you, then know that other people do. And you know, it's a highly competitive game right now, so you gotta be constantly pushing yourself and failing and coming up to the next level all the time. And so what happened with me, is I realized I was dating this girl and she called me out on some limiting beliefs that I had. And what she said was, I was saying to myself that I was gonna get so damn good at acting that the industry would come find me and they would bring me in and give me all these jobs and my career would just take off without me having to do it. They would just come and do all the work for me. And she called me out on this. She said it was bullshit. And I defended it, I got defensive. And I was like, oh, you don't know what you're talking about, blah, 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 blah. And we got in a big fight, she storms off and I'm in the park and I am stay there and I'm just thinking about it. And I was like, what if she's right? You know, what if I'm afraid of success in the same way I was in grade seven? What if I'm sabotaging myself? And so what I chose to do is I chose to change my limiting beliefs. And I changed the beliefs from one day I'll be so great that the industry will come to I am great and I am deserving right now to be a professional actor, to be paid as a professional actor, to make a living as an actor. And literally, when I changed those limiting beliefs to my new beliefs, the first audition I had I booked my first ever union gig. Swear to God, that's how, that's how quickly that happened. 
When I booked that first union gig, getting into the union is like a catch-22. They give preference to union actors to book the union job. So if you're non-union, they're like, well, the only way they're going to cast a non-union is one of two ways. Is if you have a really unique look or unique thing that you do that none of these union actors are doing and they're just like, well, we have to hire them. Or if they always bring in around one non-union actor for every time they bring in about, you know, seven or eight union actors. So you're up against great talent. You got to knock that audition so out of the park that they're like, this is why we can't book all these union actors and why we have to have this non-union actor and that'll be your first credit. Commercials work great for a lot of people. I booked uh, an episode on Quantico with Priyanka Chopra and Jake McLaughlin. So my first time, you know, on a, on my first set, I'm with like Priyanka Chopra and Jake McLaughlin. And I'm just like the whole, the whole lead cast was there and I'm hanging out with them and I'm like freaking out. I cried on the airplane. They flew me out to Montreal. I was so grateful. I made a painting for the casting director, sent it to her and I mean, the gratitude. It was seven years of struggle to get that one gig. And you cannot give up. That is my point is like, no matter how hard it gets, you gotta keep pushing through. You have to keep pushing through. It's worth it, I promise you. But it's a lot of work. Now, before I continue on with that trajectory and where I am now, I wanna talk about finances and relationship so finances are a big thing. So what I ended up doing is I was doing the serving thing, but at a certain point I took a risk on myself. I had about $40,000 saved up and that's actually what I came to Toronto with for my prosthetics career. And I quit working restaurant and I full time invested in myself in acting. Just classes, nonstop, nothing but it, no other work. Now, a couple things happened. One thing, it's extremely hard to just act 24 seven and not go crazy. It's like when you have too much time on your hands, it's like you don't know what to do sometimes. So that's a big thing when you're an actor. If you get to that point where you're now a full-time actor, you're almost gonna wanna have a little something on the side for sanity's sake. Now I still haven't done that. I've just been full blown into the acting and I found so many areas in the acting world that I've you know, really enjoy doing, so it, that's been good for me. But just know for yourself, when you become a full-time actor, when you're not working, you better be taking classes just to keep yourself busy, keep your mind busy, keep that progression going, that growth happening. And then another thing is, um, you know, so when I did that, went full-time acting, I was ripping through my savings. And what I had created a belief in at that time was, I want to know what it's like to be broke. So I can know, I can have more to relate to certain characters that have been through struggle. So guess what I did? I manifested having zero dollars in my bank account. I went down to $80. The lowest I've been in my entire life since I started selling candies at the age of like six. I had like, you know, uh, juice and Oreos and Skittles and candies. I would sell it with my brother. I had $80 in my bank account, the least amount of my entire life. And, and then what I realized, like, oh, I'm not dead. Money is not the make or breaker, it's a tool. And so I lost my fear for money. I, money didn't have that attachment over me where I was like, I need money, 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 panic, 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 need money. And then money lost its power over me. Don't let money run your life. Don't let it run your life, guys. Use it as a tool to invest in yourself and, and really don't let it stress you out. Money comes, money goes. It's not the end of the world. It's like, don't worry about it. Just stay focused. And if you're in debt, you know, get a plan, get a, get a financial plan. Change that mentality of being in debt. Change that mentality to attract the money into you. So you don't wanna get lost and fall money completely, you know, nonsense and not think about it at all and fall, you know, 100 grand into debt. You still wanna be smart. So the ways you can be smart, I ride my pedal bike 365 days a year. Why? Because I save $3.25 here, 325 there, 325 here, 325 there, bam, it adds up. You know, I keep my expenses insanely low all the time. I am not taking trips around the world. I'm not, you know, 
I did my first ever backpacking trip this summer, and that was like my first trip I've ever done for myself. In ever, I think. No, maybe 15 years kind of thing like that. So I was so focused for so long, and I was like, eventually, I was like, you know what? I've earned this. And it was so much work, and I, Man, the amount you appreciate something when you sacrifice so much to get it, it just means so much to you. It was awesome, by the way. Backpacked Europe, couple weeks, did six cities, stayed up till 6 a.m. every night, and just like, stayed on Canada time the whole time. Had a freaking right. It was awesome. So, you can earn that. <laughs> um, and this is just my suggestions of my life. Take what you want, leave what you don't. So, coming into this, um, finances. You really want to have a plan, but the one thing you don't want to do, which I've seen a lot of actors do, is they work, 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 work. They work on careers, restaurants, other jobs, and then they're not working on their acting. And when you don't immerse yourself in something, you just, the pace of learning is so slow, and it's, it's not competitive enough to compete in this how competitive it is today you got to immerse yourself and so the one thing the reason why I'm saying don't let money run you is don't try to like become a millionaire while you're an actor don't work a job trying to save up money and then you're working seven shifts a week in a restaurant eight shifts a week and then you got no energy or time for acting work three four shifts max choose a restaurant where you can make the most amount of money in the least amount of time maximize your time efficiency and then use that money make it work for you as long as you possibly can cook your own meals cook your own food wear I wear the same jackets the same clothes from 10 15 years ago I'm not blowing money on stupid things I don't need so check do you want this or do you need this if you need it you need it if you want it sure sometimes get it for yourself but don't you know always be thinking 10 steps ahead in the future Make that money run as long as you can. You want to put that into acting classes and you want to put that into new skills you want to learn. So make that money work for you in a smart way in an investment that will pay off down the road. So I've seen a lot of actors fall by the wayside in that, in that sense. That it's 10, 15 years into their careers and they've just been kind of, you know, working and then they end up drinking after work all the time. And when you're drinking, you're waking up lazy, not efficient, blah, blah, blah. It's a cycle that repeats itself. It, it's a backwards momentum. You want to go home right after work, you know, focus, get rested, wake up, get efficient again, and get in that habit of being really efficient. Um, now let's t talk health. You want to make sure you're taking care of your health and fitness diet. I mean, make that one of your top priorities. You want to have a foundation. This is your instrument. You got to take care of it. This is how you tell your stories. So make sure you're eating healthy every day so you can show up every day on set. If you're doing a movie and you got to be there for a month straight every single morning, having memorized, work through stuff, and then show up on scene healthy, it's like you can't be sick. So eat as healthy as you can. I'm vegan, been vegan four and a half years, best thing I've ever done. Um, eat an alkaline diet. All foods have a pH level. Try to eat alkaline. That's where our body rests at. 7.35, 7.45, eat alkaline. Um, so health and then fitness, man, stretching, working out, just try to maintain it. You don't need to be Zeus, but just try to uh, do a maintenance. So it's like for the rest of your life, you can just be fit and active and capable. They give you a role. I had an audition yesterday and it's to play basically like a fight club meets never back down, a big fighting movie. And I'm like, I'm in this shape already. They want to bulk the character up. I'm like, great, I can do that. I have the foundation for any type of role right now. And so you want to kind of be as versatile as you can in that aspect. Um, so body's a big one. And then mental sanity. One of the best things I ever did for myself is I did a 10 day silent meditation retreat. It's Vipassana meditation. I'll put a, a little clip up here, a link so you can see. And Vipassana meditation for 10 days straight, no talking, no communicating with other people. You're just meditating for 10 days straight and they teach you how to meditate. It takes 10 days to learn how to do it. Now what this does is it gives you a tool so every day you can clear your mind and start completely stress-free and have a, a great awareness of your ego 
And so every thought that passes through your mind, you're able to sit back and watch it and be like, ah, isn't that interesting? And when you're able to sit back and observe your thoughts, they don't have power over any over you anymore. So they lose you lose your reactivity to your thoughts. And so you can be in situations that would normally trigger someone and you can be not defensive at all. You can just kind of catch yourself. Maybe something heats up in your body and you're like, oh, I can feel like, and you're like, oh, that's interesting. That what, what used to be anger is like, it's just a hot, heated up sensation. You're like, oh, interesting. Normally I would hate that and I would react to that, but right now I'm just observing it and it loses its power over you. So as an actor, to have awareness of all your emotions and your reactions, it's really key in uh, having a sustainable career and being able to stay positive and neutral throughout the whole thing. So you're not getting into a depressed state or you're not beating yourself up or being like, oh, what's the point? I, I'm gonna quit, you know, I'm, I'm not, you know, blah, blah, which a lot of actors go through. I'll tell you that right now. Um, a lot of actors have a really tough time with this career. It's really not for everyone. And so something like meditation, if you get it that young, that's a big, big deal maker. That's gonna help you big time. So, these are the types of foundations you wanna have coming in. I've always said, patience and persistence. So you gotta be patient. That is one thing you have to be. You have to be very patient. You're gonna go stretches of time without booking jobs. And you gotta know, you gotta be patient. You gotta know that another job will come along. So just be very patient, but then be persistent. So you got to think of yourself as the CEO of your own company. You're building a brand. You got to put together a website. You got to put together demo reel, you know, YouTube if you want, Instagram uh, with your agent, work together, casting workbook, Breakdown Express, build these things, go do photo shoots, get, and then build your brand. Really show the industry who you are, where you want to place yourself in. Get specific off the front. When you get a career going, then you can really diversify a lot, but you don't want to be too scattered when you're starting out. Really let the industry know what you hit first, get a career going, and then you can start really playing and spread. So think of yourself as a business, a brand. Really develop a whole game plan, five-year game plan, 10-year game plan, 20 years, where do you want to be down the road? Communicate that with an agency. You're looking for an agency? You want to come in with a game plan have watched all the shows that are currently shooting and be like, who are the actors in those shows? You go to IMDb, look them all up. Who looks like me? Who would I be auditioning against? Watch their work. Be like, oh, that's a role that I could do. Go to the, your agent with all these suggestions of roles you could do and be like, hey, this is my game plan. I need you to do this for me to help me get to this goal. Can you do that or not? And so you become the owner of your own company. You're the CEO, you're the employer. The agency is the employee. So you need to get them to work for you, not asking them to take you on as a, you know, please, please, please. It's, this is my business. Can you help me achieve these goals or not? And they will. When you come in with a game plan like that, they're not stupid. They see that and they're like, oh, this is a person who's in it for the long run. They take it very seriously, treating it like a career. They have passion. I'm, people love that. So really latch on to that. Find an agency that works for you. And like I was saying about Colin McMurray earlier, I signed with him a couple years in to Toronto and blah, blah, blah. But I didn't have the clout yet to get auditioned. So he couldn't get me in the room. So what I needed to do is step up to another agency. So I actually had an acting coach, David Rotenberg, uh, very famous. Um, he helped Rachel McAdams, Scott Speedman get into the industry and until they took off. And so David actually took me aside one day after a few years of taking class with him and he's like, you're ready now. And he's like, uh, what do you want? And I had to tell him what I wanted and he hooked up a meeting with an agent, Danny DeLeo at Creative Drive. And I put together a business plan, pitched her as a leading man actor and this is the steps I'm gonna take to get to it. And lo and behold, I've been with her five years. My five year game plan was to get a lead in a feature film. Guess what I just did two months ago? Got my first ever lead in a feature film acting with Amber Marshall, the lead on Heartland. She's done 13 seasons. She's freaking awesome. And she kicked my butt on set. She's so damn good. 
But you know, I'm working, I'm learning, I'm growing still. It was a super challenge, but it was a blast. My first lead role in a feature film. And I did it because I built a game plan, a five year business game plan. That was in the five year game plan and I hit the mark. But there was all these steps to get to that in the way. So I'll tell you about the steps. So we're going down through. I booked my first union gig and on my flight out to shoot Quantico in Montreal, I get a call from my agent and she's like, you booked um, another commercial. And I was like, bam, that mentality, man, that change in mentality took right off. And so I booked a commercial. I got back, found out I booked another commercial, and then I booked another role on uh, a friend's movie they made. I had done a short film with them, non-union. They did a feature film, Union. They gave me a role on that that gave me a full union. And then I booked another role on The Strain that Christmas before. So this is all in a four month period of time. And then come the new year, I booked a four season recurring role on a Cardinal. Like the best damn series Canada's ever made. Uh, it, it, awesome, so blessed. Uh, John uh, Comerford and Lisa Parrison cast that and they've been a huge supporter of me ever since. Uh, they really, and what happened when I changed my limiting beliefs, I went in for an audition with these casting directors, John Comerford and Lisa Parrison, and John was in the room. And I do my audition, and this is maybe, I think, the fourth audition I ever had for them. And I do this audition, and he just sits back in his chair, and he's like, you're really good. He's like, what's your story? And I told him about this limiting belief systems I had and how I changed them. And he just looked at me, and he's like, you're good. He's like, thanks, man, great, we'll see you again. And I didn't book that job, but right after, that's when they got me that Quantico job, or that uh, Cardinal job. And so something switched in all my work and I believed in myself. And I didn't need to prove anything anymore. I wasn't desperate trying to, please give me a job, please give me a job. It was about, I know I'm good. I'm deserving of the work right now so I don't need to stress about it. I'm just gonna walk in and do the work and that's it. And they saw that. And right from then on, I made the decision, I'm gonna be a full-time working actor. And it's been, four years and three months later, and I'm still a full-time working actor, and I've been able to save up a bit of money on the side too, and keeping my expenses low still, and still keeping focused. But through this journey of booking these roles, all of a sudden, you know, all these people you grew up with in the city, taking all these classes with, they're all just like, everyone's like awesome. They're really proud of you because you worked hard and you really you made some sacrifices to get there, and like, you deserve it. You really earned it. And then what happens is, you know, different people are gonna ask different favors of you, you're gonna get a lot of attention and it can pull you away. These types of distractions, they're gonna try to pull you out of your focus mode, but you gotta stay focused through it all. And the bigger roles you book, the more distractions are gonna come in. People are gonna be contacting you for favors and this and that and that. And, you know, that's great. Try to say yes as much as you can, but also know when to say no. Know when something is a distraction and be able to say no. I'm pretty sure that's from the four agreements, Don Miguel Ruiz. And he's like, the closer you get to achieving your goal, the more distractions are gonna come into your life. And you need to be able to recognize those distractions in whatever form they take. Hey, you wanna go grab lunch today? You wanna go for a beer? You wanna blah, blah, blah? You gotta be able to say no. I would love to, I would truly, I would love to come have a drink with you tonight, but I gotta stay focused on my work. And trust me, people understand that. They get it. Stay focused, learn when to say no. It's okay to say no, know when to say yes. And then just keep your head down. There's gonna be stretches where you don't book a role for a while and you're gonna have doubts about your abilities and your skill set. am I good? Am I going backwards? Should I even be doing this? Don't let it get to you. Stay focused, keep taking classes, keep trying new things, new skills. And so always be broadening your skills. Think of yourself as a product. You want to offer as much service as you can. So, you know, go learn new skills. Go learn how to fight. You want to get be in a fighting film? A rape Your Wit does a combat certification. So I'm going to do my intermediate certification in January. It's three weeks, 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. every single day, more than three weeks, 
every single day of just combat, combat, combat. Why? I want to get into the combat action genre. So what am I doing? I'm putting all these skill sets in my pocket, meeting the people, taking courses. You know, I did my first action film in January. What a blast. Took some crazy risks on set. Watched the film. Cool, man. I'm like, next time I'm going to do better. But it's like it's a learning process. And then you got to enjoy the journey. Relationship is another thing too. You know, it's not a lot of time in the day to make all these things work together. So when you find a relationship, what you really want to look for is someone with shared common goals and shared common values. And you really want to make sure those are aligned so that you work together for a dream in the future, that you're supporting each other and you believe in each other and you, under, you understand each other's like where they're coming from and it's about compromise too. So in a relationship, there's always going to be nitpicky little things you have and it's about making a compromise on your behalf first without expecting anything in return. And what happens, ironically enough, is when you start doing these little things for someone else in a relationship, they pick up on that. And all of a sudden they start changing little things and doing things for you and it becomes a very beautiful relationship. Now there's a whole bunch of other factors to it, but you want to have someone who supports you in your dream and your goals and the same with them. When you can find that, that's when you got a dream team. That's when you're like really taking it to the next level because in all areas of your life, health, mental, um, relationship, finances, um, all these different areas are all aligned, growth. And when they're all aligned, that's when you got yourself, you know, a really, I don't want to, I'd say a competitive edge. So to any millennials or anyone acting in the acting in, entering the acting industry these days, the, these are the, this is the advice I can give you. And I'll just kind of reiterate quickly, patience and persistence Invest in yourself now and it'll pay off down the road. I've been doing this 11 years now and the way I was told when I was younger, the first 10 years are huge investment. Next 10 years, you're gonna break even. Next 10 years is when you make bank, if that's what you're looking at. So my first 10 years, guess what, man? Huge investment. Next 10 years, I'm already into that. I'm making, I'm breaking even, I'm getting money, I'm paying off, you know, what I, what I invested, and it is, it's like, it works. It, this is kind of how it works. But those 10 years you pop in, man, invest, 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 stay focused, keep expenses low, don't be expecting the world to give you everything you want. Know that it's gonna take time and it's gonna take a lot of effort and hustle and just keep at it. Just don't stop. Open your heart, emotion is a big thing I didn't mention. Learn to open your heart. That's something I wish I had learned earlier. At first when I was doing acting classes, it was just memorizing and scene analysis and blah, 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 but I wasn't linking my heart to the characters. Open your heart. Go do some spiritual retreats. Do some, you know, whatever. But open, learn to open your heart and really allow emotion to be your friend. Understand yourself. Uh, write some beautiful letters to family members telling them how you feel from the heart. You know, just become a heart open person. Go volunteer. I started volunteering at a hospice in Toronto last October. So that's over a year ago. And that type of experience teaches you all about, you know, your personal biases and, you know, the way you judge people. And it gets you to check yourself and open up your heart and share and hold space for people in a very vulnerable period of their life, you know. And it becomes not about you at all. It becomes about listening and holding space. And these are tools that have been forgotten along the way by you know our generation. I'm a millennial as well, 86. And so open your heart and really, really, really care about other people. I can't stress that enough. It can't be about you. If it's just about you, then it's like, what's the point? You know, what a lonely journey. So really try to build yourself a community and that'll come naturally along the way as long as you're out there interacting, socializing, taking classes, get outside your comfort zone. Remember my grade seven story, that fear, don't let that fear run your life. Get outside that comfort zone, take that risk, fall on your ass and as you get better in acting, expectations are higher that you're gonna you're supposed to be amazing and blah 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 don't let that fear of meeting expectations other people's expectations or your own you know stop you from failing you still gotta put yourself out there 
around your peers and fail. It doesn't stop. So, you know, humility is a huge factor in this all. Guys, I'm really excited for your journey. I'm really, really excited for you all to, you know, step into this industry and really bring your hearts and, you know, your passion into it. Just understand a lot of factors to make it a healthy, happy journey. And I wish you all the best of luck. If you have any questions, once again, feel free to uh, throw uh, comments in the comment box and give the video a thumbs up if you like it. All right, guys, I'll be making more content. So hope this helps you and have a wonderful year, life, everything. Bye, guys.